Hi, my name is Dr. Adams and I'm a dentist at Maryland Holistic Dentist in Burtonsville, Maryland. And today I'm going to do a video about how to properly remove a tooth and clean it, treat it with PRF and get the bone to grow properly back into the jawbone. There's been a lot of discussion about this, but uh, this video will actually show how we do it. We're going to extract the tooth today and we're going to treat the site and you'll see how it works. I'm going to first tell you the steps that we're going to do. The first step is to obviously get the patient nom. This patient is having a lower first molar, otherwise known as number 30, removed. There was a large deep filling that was placed a while ago and the nerve of the tooth has died and the patient has opted to have the tooth removed and replaced with a metal free implant rather than do a root canal and a crown. So that's pretty much what we're going to do today. And now that the patient's numb, we're going to, uh, it's a two-rooted tooth, these lower molars. I'm going to separate the tooth into two pieces so I can carefully remove it one piece at a time. And once the tooth is removed, it's really important that you remove the periodontal ligament. So we will take an instrument called a curette and we will remove the PDL. It's almost like a peach fuzz type connection that connects the tooth to the jawbone. And oftentimes with a dead tooth, there'll be some scar tissue. The body will grow a little cyst that'll wrap around the root of the tooth. And it's really important that you remove that tissue. That tissue actually grows around the root to prevent any bacteria or dead tissue from leaking into other parts of your body easily. So we want to get that out of the way, get the periodontal ligament out of the way. And once that's done, the bone cells can migrate into the area and grow a new bone. We will take ozone and oxygen gas, which is in this tube here. Ozone is O3 and oxygen is O2. That uh, being a gas, it uh, is easily delivered down into the pores of the bone. It'll travel throughout the jawbone and kill any bacteria or fungus that have made their way down into the bone and promote healing. And then we have drawn two vials of the patient's blood that we're currently spinning in the centrifuge. And that is, uh, being uh, processed uh, for playbook rich fiber, you'll get to see how we put that into the extraction site. And finally, we will take a stitch that dissolves on its own and we will um, kind of tie that around to the extraction site. The gum tissue used to be attached to the tube, so it's a little bit loose. So we'll, and of course, we want to hold the platelet treatment down into the site. The platelet treatment almost looks like a yellow jello, and we'll kind of wrap it around the extraction site a few times to keep the gum tissue nice and um, proximated up against the jaw and also hold the platelet rich fibrin in place. So we're going to go ahead without delay and we're going to start removing this tooth. Like I said before, step one is to cut the tooth into two pieces. Let me see that bite block. Uh, I will typically give the patient something to rest their teeth on. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And open bag. Good. And just to orient everybody, um, this tooth right here is tooth number 30. And so what I'm going to do, since this tooth has two roots uh, that kind of look like this, I'm going to separate the tooth into two pieces and I'm going to kind of just cut it front to back here and then we can easily take it out like two splinters rather than trying to pull it out in one big piece which would be much more traumatic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the suction on right now so you're not really going to be able to hear as much what I'm saying and uh, I'll put my mask on get ready to go. All right suction. <laughs> Does that hurt at all? Mm -mm. Okay, good. Let me, let me know by raising your right hand if it hurts at all, okay? Okay, I'm not sure if it's in here or not. It doesn't hurt, right? Mm-mm. Okay. It's really easy to tell if the tooth is alive at all anymore. Um, here, go ahead and take that away. If you look down in the tooth, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this tooth actually still does have some living tissue in there. 
Um, that is a lot of uh, blood for a tooth. It's only a few pinpricks worth, but this tooth has probably been hurting for a while. And these teeth will have three or four nerves in them. And the truth of the matter is, there's probably one or two that's dead and another one that's alive. It doesn't hurt, right? Mm-mm. Okay. If you want, you can, uh, I don't know, let's keep going Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I want to get in here and just make sure we have the tooth in two pieces. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle this. You may hear a little pop or something. Okay, that's just the tooth kind of finally gets into two pieces. You can hear a little bit of stretching noises sometimes. Does that hurt at all? Mm -mm. You'll feel the pressure of me wiggling, right? But you don't feel any like deep down like pain. Okay. Does seem to be moving pretty well. You want to kind of go slowly and steadily, ease it out. At this point, we've actually gotten the tooth out. As you can see, uh, this root came out very cleanly in one piece. We did a really good job of just separating it right down the middle. Um, this is the actual other root. And then uh, in the process of extraction, the crown separated from the root. But I think, uh, needless to say, it was pretty smooth. I think it took us maybe three or four minutes to get this tooth out. So now we're at the point where we get to the most important part. Um, let's come over here and take a look at the two site. You can see that really not much uh, collateral damage has occurred to the extraction site. We have uh, gum tissue that uh, it's been relatively unaltered and the, neither one of the te next door teeth have been uh, damaged. I can put my finger in here and feel that the bone on the front and the back are very much intact. This is really exactly the way you want things to be. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the periodontal ligament, which uh, I do with this curette instrument. Sometimes there's the need for some strategies that are a little more aggressive, but this... Uh, is a tooth that's really fairly uh, easy to clean. You're not gonna be able to hear as much now because I'm gonna turn the suction on. Go ahead and suction in here. Just gonna get this instrument down here and really clean. You can see that these are the little fibers. You can go ahead and suction that away, that's fine. Get down in this sight. You really wanna make sure to get down to the bottom, get it all clean. There's not any scar tissue or cysts at the bottom of this area. That's much more common in root canal extractions. I have a video called How to Properly Remove a Root Canal Tooth that you can watch. There's a lot more going on with those teeth. This is the ozone and oxygen gas. If we more or less will just bubble this down into the extraction site. You can see bubbles forming. The other thing you see here too, there's not a lot of blood, but there's a little bit that lets us know that this bone is alive and healthy. And then the final thing that we do is we put the platelet rich fiber in. These are the two vials of blood that we drew here. 
and you can see that there's two layers basically the yellow layer on top and the red layer on the bottom the yellow layer is essentially uh, what we're after it's a mixture of uh, white blood cells platelets fibrin there's a lot of bone growth factors in there and uh, yeah I think that's, we're gonna go ahead and tap into one of these So, and close, and we want to get the red part of it off. This stuff is very uh, fluid, and we want that fluid. I'm gonna come over here to our extraction site. We're gonna put the uh, pleo rich fibrin in here. It looks very substantial. It's gonna seem like it really isn't gonna want to go in there. But I've trained my, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I've trained my fingers to really get it going in the right direction. And then when you get it near in there, you can start pushing it with a little bit of cotton. You'd be surprised how much this stuff will fit in here. Go ahead. Okay, this is what the site looks like once we have the little red fibrin in there. So you can see the sites are totally filled with uh, the fibrin. And all we have left to do at this point is go ahead and apply a couple stitches.